Remember that $250 real Gibson Les Paul Modern? I've got the story. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update, but first we need to hear from a viewer who was the lucky one who got the $249 Les Paul. Quack. Yeah, that didn't go over too well. Basically, the demo shop canceled it and relisted it at its correct pricing. And if he has any issues with that, they told him to contact Reverb. He wasn't really expecting to get it, but maybe they could have sold it to him at cost or like send him something. I kind of agree in that situation. If this was just a regular Reverb guy, yeah, but this is Gibson, the big company we're talking about. So no, it doesn't appear it's going to be a new thing where occasionally they give you a crazy good deal just to drum up more interest in the demo shop again. But oh well, thank you Thomas for sharing your story. Now let's Let's check out the mod collection. The first one was 1800 bucks. it's a junior, and they called it Guard Burst. Why Guard Burst? Well, the pick guard has a burst. <laughs> the rest of it's just ebony. But if you look closely, even the knobs have a slight multicolor shifting effect to them. That's interesting. But you're probably saying, hey, I could do that at home with my spray booth. Well, to spice it up even further, they give us one of the old-timey Gibson logos on the headstock. Kind of reminds me of that 2018 limited edition series that we talked about in this episode. The back appears to be normal, although it might be a satin finish. But to follow that up, we've got a 335. They call it spatial satin. A 3200 box. At first, you might not have seen it, but you've got some sort of a spatial design down here. Not my favorite, but kind of reminds me of a blanket. Headstock looks pretty normal. But ha, huh, kind of a missed opportunity not to put another one of those designs all over the back. Or even better yet, stencil it all over the neck. That would be cool. How do you feel about Beauty in the Beige? It was 5300, definitely another satin finish. They blacked out all our hardware, uncovered pickups, but still with the gold accents. It really reminds me of the Government Series 2 Les Pauls, but beefed up into a custom format, which I wish they would have did back then. Have the USA governments and then a single custom shop run. You can bet your butt that one would have been collectible. But you've got your Desert Storm finish on the back. But no matching headstock or anything too crazy. But yet they left your truss rod cover screws gold, whereas they blacked everything else out. I suppose if you go back to the body, they left a lot of gold accents. Like around your poker chip, and the screws for your pick guard, and height adjustment. Outside of just the adjustable pull pieces. This delectable Red Burst SG, though, is quite attractive. It looks like they just gave it a very slight darker border, and it takes it from what we've seen a lot of lately to something completely new, and I love it. It's a little bit tricky to see, but those look like chrome P90 covers. I think that helps transform it as well. Then you flip it over to the back, and it looks like they did it here too. On the back, a little bit on the heel, a little bit on the neck, and around our serial number, and it's a full gloss. With the Cheeky Peachy logo. But this 50 standard was done in Sunspot Burst. What it looks like to me is it started life as maybe one of the 50s P90ones. It was initially gold, so they just sprayed red over top of it. They threw a mini humbucker in it. Definitely a pickup combination you don't see every day. It looks like they might have upgraded it to custom shop knobs. Headstock's the same, but how's our back? Left natural. How's this for a tasty finish? Fruit snack. Offered at 3300 this is just a really unique color. You've got red with an interesting flame top with a very select dark border. P94 in the neck, uncovered bridge. This reminds me of something that would come out of Gibson in like the 2016-2018-ish era. Similar to, but not exactly blood orange finish. But oh, ho ho ho! Is that the same guitar? It's a, a sparkle blue headstock? Oh, uh, I see it now. That's not black. I was wrong. It's sparkle blue. This just kind of looks like the Les Paul special that we had documented before, but different. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense now why it's called that. That was the sleeper of this week. It was not too much of a premium either. Following that up, Smokehouse Burst Satin. So there were Smokehouse Burst Classics at Sweetwater, but they're done. You can't buy them anymore. Someone leaked to me all the new 2024 models, and I wish they wouldn't have because I would have rather been excited on launch day, but let me tell you guys, I've seen the future, and we're going back to 2018. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things, yeah, I could make a video on it and get everybody hyped up, but sometimes it's more fun to wait for the organic releases rather than a rogue employee sending me stuff. And that's because it appears the classic in its current standing might be discontinued. But this one's satin. It looks nice. It's all blacked out. Uh, is that one of those oiled necks again? I don't see it, so that just must be a particularly weird looking neck with a new stain. But hey, series parallel pickup switching. 
And lastly, Viridescent Satin SG Tribute. It's a nice green, but just green with a natural neck. But now let's check in with our European mod collection. How are these guys doing? Uh, still not selling a lot. And they added an Unburst with Satin Back, 60 standard. Eh, I mean, it looks nice. Got a red back. But I will give them props on this one. Rustic Gold, 50 standard. They put Firebird pickups in here, chromed out everything they could. And then th this finish has like a, a weird red staining to it just around routes and like edges. I wonder if this is just a contaminated gold top and they're trying to pass it off as something that they did. <laughs> it's interesting. The rest of it is just normal with the natural back. But oh, they utilize the Schaller M6 style tuners. Cool. Now the USA demo shop. They have brought the free Maestro pedal to the States. However, we only get a week. Unlike the other two demo shops getting a whole month. But they dropped a whole boatload of Les Paul standards this week. The ones that caught my attention were this 50s Faded, this 50s Hand Select, a pretty nice Bourbon Burst. But now my two favorites, 60s Faded Standard that they made very ugly. But at the same time, when I was first modifying my personal Epiphone before Sweetwater redid it, I was kind of doing a similar thing, so I get it. Sometimes it's fun to mix match all the stuff, like you got black and chrome mixed for your tuners, which honestly looks pretty good. But then you got the zebra bobbins, and that's why they zebraed the pickups and zebraed the knobs. I think this would work better if it was like a metallic blue finish or something that's not cherry sunburst. And it's not like that's a steal of a deal. So I imagine that one might sit for a while. But this one was modified in a way that made it not even look like a standard in the regular lineup anymore. That's a really nice dark finish with the blacked out vibes. Certainly unique. Rather than standards, there's a 345 done up in gold, put a trim system on it. That's pretty nice getting that outside of the custom shop. And they gave you a pretty sizable discount. And then this is a 50s P90, which I suppose I probably should have bunched it in with the other ones, but this one was unique. See-through pit guard, black P90s, but then they use colorful piece knobs on it, which I'm surprised they still have those things to use up. The back is just natural. And then lastly, a Les Paul Special TV Yellow. Gave it the old mustard vibes. See-through pit guards and knobs cream plastics. Personally, I'm not a big fan of cream and TV yellow. I feel you need the black to balance it out. Now the European demo shop. They literally had four new items. This was a pretty nice 50s standard, but I really like the 60s figure top. That's a good one. Really strong wood grain and flame. Yeah, the back's not too bad either. And kind of similar story in the UK shop. The big thing here is the prices just don't seem that good anymore. For example, this brand new 68 Custom. Now granted, it's in the classic white finish. Including value added tax, it's about 6,500. Brand new, that model is 6,200. Now white is a premium color. Usually they charge about 500 bucks extra for it. So you technically are getting a discount and getting taxes included, but so far it just doesn't seem to really be enticing this particular market to be buying their goods. But market analysis aside, it's a beautiful guitar. 68 specs means we're going to get the ABR1 bridge and we've got the maple top. And you're gonna have a slightly chunkier neck with these unique waffle back tuners. Then they also had a Victoria, but again, those are 3,200 brand new. So you're really only saving the sales tax in exchange for getting the demo stamp. But oh, looks like we got some time left tonight. So let's see a recap from a previous episode. So when I talked to the guy who ran this division within Gibson, he said a couple of months ago that he never planned on listing a headstock repaired guitar. He just thought it really wasn't worth the shop's time to repair it and then sell it. However, yeah. This one has a headstock repair. And I can't say I blame them because this was likely a custom order for somebody and somebody at the custom shop has a good story to share with this thing. Maybe it was broken there. Maybe it got broken in transit to the customer at the dealer. I don't think they shared those details, unfortunately, because this is the only thing within the Murphy Lab division that is offered in this configuration. It's $7,200. They only offer it in classic white. So somebody had to have custom ordered it in this Pelham Blue. So when something happens and you have that much money into a guitar, it would be a darn shame to scrap the entire thing, right? So I think it's okay that they repaired this and are selling it as is the price. I mean, 5,600 bucks down from 7,299, granted, it just 
doesn't seem worth it to me. I would rather pay a little bit more and get one minty fresh. However, I do still see this guitar selling because of the novelty. It was the very first headstock repair that Gibson ever publicly sold. <laughs> I mean, at least they had the common decency to put a stinger over top of it to hide it a bit. But to be honest, these guys are great at building guitars, right? But as far as doing repairs that are hidden and good, Nah, that's not necessarily their strong point looking at this one. I mean, if you've got finish over top of your repair, I'm sure they could have made it completely invisible. But maybe at the same time, they didn't want to do that. Because then it might not have got listed correctly. It's good to actually be able to show that. Alright, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.